Thank you so much. It's great to be here and it's great to talk to you about happiness in Finnish children, in happiness in students. Uh, for a few past years, I have been studying global and school-related happiness in students in different age groups. And quite fortunately, most of our students seem happy, almost totally irrespective of their age, gender, race or living area, the great majority of them are happy. However, our students with special needs do experience less happiness than their peers in mainstream classes. And for sure, many factors intervene in these results. And it just underlines the fact that we need to promote the happiness and overall well-being in those children who are facing challenges in their learning in particular. We all know that happiness um, and learning happiness uh, takes optimum, optimal place in environment, in environments that are safe and trustworthy. In environments where diversity is not just accepted, but celebrated. In Finland, historically, we have had the advantage, or perhaps disadvantage, of being such a small, homogeneous population. And we have always appreciated learning a lot. Um, well, this has not been totally based on volunteering since back in the 17th century. At least minimal reading skills were required for everybody who wanted to get married. So the motivation was well backed. However, the foundations were laid to teach almost everybody almost the same basic contents. Uh, contents. And we truly have succeeded in this very well. After all the top scores in PISA and other international school assessments, we are facing new demands now. Not anymore are we a homogeneous bunch of learners. Not anymore is education appreciated in every home. And not at all are the learning contents becoming any simpler. So, what should we do differently? Should we dare to leave something out? How should we change our curricula? And most importantly, how could we increase happiness in every learner? Some 15 years ago, the Nobel Prize winner James J. Heckman stated, it is common knowledge outside of academic journals that tenacity trustworthiness, motivation, and perseverance are important traits for success in life. It is thus surprising that academic discussion of skill and skill formation almost exclusively focus on measures of cognitive abilities and ignore non-cognitive skills. What do we teach in our schools? A lot of academic very deep knowledge in various subjects, or that is at least what we are trying to do. We all know plenty of adults who frankly state that they have attended to several classes for perhaps a decade without ever understanding a word out of the instruction that was given to them. And even though, what use do we have of all this subject and substance teaching if our students don't have the driving force to put their knowledge in use. So we also have to teach them these driving force skills, these mostly non-cognitive skills, the character strengths, such as courage or bravery, grit and the Finnish sisu, we need to uh, teach them patience and self-control, temperance and prudence. 
perseverance, persistence, tenacity, and of course, social skills and how to make friends. These are the very core things, really the heavy pillars that support us throughout our lives and really the factors that drive our success. And quite luckily, these uh, character strengths are something that can be taught and they should be taught, not just as byproducts of something else, but as justified subjects by themselves. And really promoting character strengths, identifying them and using them is tightly linked to increased happiness. This is backed by a multitude of, study, of studies. Especially for our children with special needs, focusing on strengths is of heightened importance. The history of special education is very disease-centered. We have become masters in diagnosing what is wrong. We know how to measure difficulties, disabilities, anomalies and dysfunctionality. What if we measured what is right with you instead? What if we diagnosed excellence instead of weaknesses? And in order to tackle the nowadays challenges, the great social, uh, societal challenges, we have to, we, or we cannot ignore the character strengths and character building anymore. And it is not just to avoid us from uh, getting ill in some kind of mental, mental illnesses, but in order to make us all flourish, and in order to make the living as its best for everyone, and in order to make us more helpful and more compassionate toward other, other people. Uh, and this picture um, is given by Mark Lincolns, who has written that character strengths are the rudder and fuel that energize our talents. Without energy, nothing happens. If we are not feeling well for one reason or another, our energy is directed towards dealing with these bothering issues. And if we are in a stressful event, or even worse, if we are facing chronic stress, our learning capacity is effectively blocked. In a flight or fight state, our memory is not working as its best. And yes, we do have a lot of students whose learning is not fun at all, but pure stress. Perhaps their whole learning path has been a string of failures. And in a myriad of cases, it is because their learning has never been rewarded. And we know what that makes to one's self-confidence. And we also know that the beliefs and perceptions of oneself as a learner start to develop very early on, already in the very beginning of the first grade. And they are very hard to change. Uh, promoting character strengths and building on what is good and intact in a learner is a very efficient way to try to tackle, in trying to tackle this decrease in self-confidence. In our studies on happiness, we have asked more than 1,000 Finnish students what would increase your happiness. And this has been accomplished by giving them this list of putative happiness increasing factors. And what would you guess? What have they chosen? This is a list that was given to 12-year-old, that is for, for the sixth graders. I'll tell you, it is more success in school. In fact, the order of these items in this list is the order that was chosen by, by the sixth graders. And there has been very little variation in the results. We have obtained almost the same results when we asked the same question uh, from the uh, nine, uh, ninth graders. 
uh, they, they wanted to have more money more frequently than the sixth graders, but, but otherwise the list was about the same. And uh, of course this pertains only to those students who are already feeling pretty good. When we divided our sample in, in quartiles according to the uh, basic level uh, or the uh, overall level of happiness, the least happy quartile chose more friends, a better health, and uh, a more peaceful family life. And by the way, becoming a celebrity was the least wanted choice made by the 12-year-olds. And it was among the least made choices in our ninth graders. But so really, the grades do matter, and the school does matter. So, uh, to put it together, we are in a, a very nice uh, position. Most of our students are happy, and most of them would like to ha have a better success in school. So, how could these two phenomena coincide? Um, it has also become a mantra-like of saying that Finnish students do not feel well at school. And there is a lot of research backing this assumption. Also, our own recent studies show the same. Quite recently, we asked several hundred uh, hundreds high, school, uh, high school students, both junior and senior high schoolers, uh, does school inspire you? About 50% agreed on that, but most of them just a bit. So there still is plenty of room for improvement. And we have also asked the students in the same data set, is it okay to come to school? Did you want to come to school today? Most of them say yes, but any really big excitement or enjoyment in learning is hard to find. In the same study, we asked the students, what is the most influential factor in your learning? And guess what they answered? 90% of them said that it is a competent, inspiring teacher. And I think this is quite poignant, because nowadays, sometimes, you get the idea that children are just learning by themselves or from their friends, independently, computer-driven, web-based, in times that do not match the lesson times at school. And really, that is all very true and also quite welcome. However, in schools, at least in our former schooling, it is the teacher who organizes the learning. And it is the teacher who either promotes or quenches the feelings of competence, autonomy and relatedness, the key factors in inner motivation and well-being. And it is a teacher's task to know the students and to have the pedagogical sensitivity to offer them various learning opportunities and how to gain and form information. And now we are not talking about teacher-centered learning, but learning that is facilitated by the teacher, empowering the students and giving them a sense of agency. And the teacher's primary task is to build on what is functioning well. And again, this is not to say that we shouldn't care about the problems or try to solve them. No. But the emphasis should be on the strengths and on the circumstances where students can be caught being good. In our students, in our growing number of students with heterogeneous special needs, this is of great importance, but not just for them. And by the way, what benefits students with special needs benefits all. All educators' attitudes and actions count a lot. And finally, we should remember, celebrate the diversities and we should make our students aware of what they are brilliant at. And since 
we have highly qualified, motivated teachers and educations. Our chances to succeed in this endeavor seem very good. Thank you.